we don't like to get too realistic here in intro physics, but I do want to tell you a little bit about what happens to real materials when you really start to bend them. So we just talked about the different elastic moduli and how it's a constant, which implies that if we were to take a material and strain it, for example, delta L over L, you know, stretch it to some percentage, if stretch it by 1% or 2% or 10%, that uh, you would get, it would take a constant uh, stress. All right, remember that's the force per unit area. How you apply it kind of depends on which elastic modulus you're talking about. But the fact that we gave you constant values for Young's modulus, et cetera, implies that this is a line. If you double the strain, you double the stress, or it takes twice as much stress to make twice as much strain, however you want to think about it. But of course, eventually, something will go wrong. Eventually, a material, a real material will break, or it'll deform, or something. So there's a lot of words around this. I just want to give you a feel for how materials behave. One kind of material is if it's brittle, like a ceramic or glass or something, if you pull on it, say, let's imagine we're stretching a, just a, a rod of this material, and if you pull strain, you'll get some stress, twice as much strain, twice as much stress. Eventually, something weird will start to happen, and then boom, it'll break. Snap it in half. And the typical point strain where this happens is on the order of, and I'm saying the order of because it varies wildly for materials and how perfect they are, but like 1% for like a solid material. You can strain it about 1% before bad things start to happen. I'm not going to break one for you because it's dangerous. Cut me, all kinds of things will go on. But let's also look at the curve for something like a metal that's ductile, something that will um, deform. Okay, so if we had the same thing, we had a stress strain curve for a metal uh, strain, and here I'm just being general, but we can imagine that it's for elongation. Let's say we're pulling it apart. It'll also be nice and linear here, like that. But then the metal will start to deform. It'll start to do something weird. It'll deviate from a line, and then it kind of goes up and over. And here it's like stretching out and making a neck or something. Come over like that, and eventually it'll break. So the difference is what you're seeing here is you're seeing the metal being drawn into a wire. And that's what, what can really happen. And you want to be careful with the word elastic. What does elastic really mean? So we'll say the elastic part is here. So technically, I guess, at least in my physics vernacular, elastic doesn't mean it's a line. Proportional means it's a line. Okay, so the fact that this is straight just means that the, const, the, young, the elastic modulus doesn't depend on the strain of the stress. It's a constant value, and this makes a line. Elastic means that if you go up to some value and come back, you'll go on the same line. All right, so we go up to here, come back, go up to here, come back, on the same line, it'll be fine. Right? What eventually happens is plastic deformation. Eventually, if you go up, you won't come back on the same line, but it still might be straight. Okay, so let's imagine this. If you have a metal, you stretch it, you stretch it, you go too far, this is around 1% strain again, and then, oh no, we're starting to deform it. Oh, when you've now stretched it, it's even like 20% longer than it was. It's thinner, it conserved mass. Now stop, now let's go back down. It'd be a nice line, because it's still a metal, you didn't break it. You didn't turn it into another element. You didn't change its crystal structure too much. You probably moved some grains around. But then if you did it again, then you go through the same process. So elastic means it comes down the same curve. Plastic, when you've plastically deformed it, it goes back down on a different curve. Okay. Where it's proportional is where this is a line. And what illustrates that is, so here I can show you, watch this. So here, I'm going to pull this so hard, I'm going to deform this brass. No, I'm not really. I can feel that it's maybe getting me 1% before I can do that. But then you would say, then what's going on with this? Elastic cord that we call elastic deforms a lot more than 1%, right? So what's, well, what's going on here? So actually, how something deforms depends on sort of what it's made of. So these are sort of polycrystalline materials, the metals, and you're sort of deforming probably the little crystals next to each other. This elastic, this is more long molecules being uh, sort of stretched out and getting this stretched back together. It actually doesn't make a nice line. 
if you look at the stress strain curve um, of, I don't know what to call it, an elastomer, I guess, all these polymer stretchy things, it kind of goes something like that. Or all kinds of weird shapes, I don't know. It does all kinds, of, it doesn't make a line, is the point. It doesn't make a line, yet we call it elastic. And the reason is, it does follow the same, cur same curve back, right? If we stretch it and it goes on some weird curve, I've probably drawn this the wrong way, and you stop, then you stretch it and it comes back. Maybe not this extreme of a curve, but you get the idea. If it's curved, it comes back. Curved, it comes back. Because it's elastic. Okay, so elastic and a flat line don't mean the same thing. That's the main point I'm trying to tell you and to give you an idea of how different materials might behave.